uh, welcome back to another lecture. We're going to go ahead and design a double T, uh, pre stressed double T beam with a harp uh, tendon. It's about uh, simply supported 70 feet uh, span. Say it's a, a for a parking garage. Uh, the roads are kind of small for a, um, a floor beam, but it just says a, a roof beam. And we have uh, the uh, superimposed dead load 100 pounds per foot and a life load of 300 pound uh, per foot. And uh, if you experience designer or you designed this before, you automatically know what you're picking up. So you go ahead and select a double T beam uh, from the code, and then you go ahead and do a structural analysis. Because we don't have that experience, and we're gonna go ahead and figure out what size should we select. One of the things I need to do, I need to assume the weight of the beam. So to make it easier for this calculation, I'm going to assume the exact weight of the beam that I want to pick. But say, you know, that's something you say, how do I know that? Well, come with me. To assume the weight, really, <coughs> go on to the uh, PCI uh, website. And then only go on Google, type in uh, design table and chart at PCI. Then you will come into this page. Well, I can just go ahead and uh, put this uh, link. It's on a PowerPoint and I'll show it later. So once you're here, you come down and you can see they have all different edition from the edition first to uh, seventh edition, but we don't want that. We want to go to the latest edition, which is the seventh edition. If you click on that, and it will give you these um, uh, option right here and uh, normally they uh, probably look like that. You end up with three uh, options. You want to go to load table, and when you click on load table, and then you want to click on double T, and uh, double T is right here. And so how we're going to assume what, what I'm going to do, because the design itself is a trial and error to select your beam, I'm going to start out with the first one right here. I'm going to click on this first one. And then I'm going to say, OK, the w assume weight of this one is right here. It says um, uh, 468 pounds. So let that be for now. Just keep that in mind. Let me go back to other screen. Bring back this down here. Whoa, let's keep it right in that corner. So we said 468 pounds. So we're going to call W uh, dead load W. D is equal to 468 pound per foot. You can assume that, or you can just assume that weight. But the problem is when you assume a weight, you do all your work, and then you come back. I have to raise the real weight, and then you do it again. So why not just go ahead and do it this way? But again, experienced design, no, they know what they're doing. They just picked a uh, size. So we assume that now we have that. We know th those are our uh, uh, loads. And we're going to go ahead and get to work. So the procedure is just like designing any beam, timber, steel, concrete. So one of the things we're going to go ahead and figure out the uh, section module, both for top and bottom, based on the load, applied load that is given to us, or the load that we're going to design for. And in case, watching some of uh, my other video, where these loads come from, you can pick these out from the code. Uh, what is the how many pounds per square foot? And then you convert that to a pound per foot using a turbo three width. But anyway, that's for another day. So now this is the equation, and we want to find out what have all of these. Uh, what is gamma? What is dead, mo dead load moment? Uh, and the superimposed the, the dead load and life load. Calculate all those and calculate the uh, tension and compression, and all that. So in a problem is given to us that um, that assume ten percent initial loss. So ten uh, percent initial loss, and then we give my gamma is equal to minus 10, become 0.9. And then we're going to calculate the dead load moment and calculate the, uh, let's calculate F T I first. OK, so uh, the F T I and F S C is based on a code, which is on a board. Take a look at it, per code. If a TI comes out to 184 PSI, and FC comes out to 0.45 times 25,000, 2250. 
Now I want to go calculate the all the moment. Yeah. So I'm going to go ahead and calculate the moment at three different locations. You remember when we have a, this is a basically a uniformly distributed load back into, uh, if you go back to uh, um, stress flow analysis, it was a load like that. And, and you know, the uh, you have a shared moment diagram. Your moment diagram is something like that. So I want to calculate the moment at the center at 0.4L, which is a critical moment, and also at uh, where we have the point of support. we we'll talk about that in a minute. So I want to calculate those uh, moments. But for calculating this section module, I use the maximum one, which is the uh, admit span. And uh, so let's get to work. And you know that from the beam formula, that moment is equal, uh, admit span is W, L squared divided by 8. And I'm going to go ahead and call for dead load moment, so call the ND, which was 468 times uh, 70 squared. Let's make that to an inch, multiplied by 12, and divided by 8. And I'm going to say mid spin. That load moment comes out to thirty-four forty inch. Can calculate the uh, uh, superimposed dead load. Um, M S D is equal same thing, which is equal uh, one hundred times seventy square times twelve divided by 8, so my moment here, superimposed dead load, comes out to 735 inch cube, or 735,000 inch pounds, so just convert to cube. And the last one is going to be a M life load, it's going to be same thing, which was 300 times 70 square times 12 divided by 8, and moment of life load comes out to 22.05 inch kip. Yeah. Now I'm going to do the same thing. Uh, I'm going to different, use a different color here. At 0.4L. Take the MD for Point four L is going to be basically that one came out to thirty four forty. I can multiply by point nine six. Comes out to uh, uh, thirty three oh two inch kip. Now this really you can use the equation which is on the board, and I will use it in the other one. Um, the equation will be. Uh, right here. So the moment MX for uh, uniform distributed load is um, WX divided by 2 times L minus X. You can use this to calculate that it will just multiply by 0.96 will give you the uh, same result. And we're going to go ahead and calculate the same way MSD, which is a 735 times 0.96. MSD comes out to uh, 706 inch kip. The next one we're going to calculate is uh, MSL. And that is 22.05 times 0.96. MSL equal 21.17. Another moment we want to calculate is a self-weight moment at transit. When these things are built, 
and then they take it out of the mold and they have to carry them in a yard to pick it up and put it on a uh, in a yard to stockpile them or just pick them up put them on a truck to transport them and we want to know how much moment there is at that time so again based on the same equation we're going to say uh, this one is going to be at transit point and we really just can't, we're not concerned about superimpose that word because that's on job site or the uh, life but we just worry about the uh, dead load itself and you're going to use that formula so it's going to be m um, dead load is equal W came out to uh, uh, 468 pound per foot time X. Now, what is X? It's the transfer transfer length is equal to 2.1 feet, and that's based on that equation. Time 2.1 divided by 2 times 70 minus 2.1 and time 12 make it an inch. And that comes out to uh, MV four hundred point four uh, cubic. Now that we have found of our, our moment, I'm going to erase this, and I'm going to calculate the S at top and S at bottom based on mid span moment, which is the maximum. And then we take these numbers. We go back to the table from PCI find the number that we like that based on this educated guess and we select it and we continue let me erase this it's going to be equal one minus point nine the 10 percent less MED came out to 340 inch cube plus m of uh, sd came out to 735 and plus 2205 Divide the whole thing by, we have gamma is equal to 0.9 times F of TI came out to ooh, 184 and minus, now I gotta be careful here, this is a compression, so it's gonna minus 2250. Those two numbers gonna add up at the bottom. This is going to come out to, uh, let me write in a different color, 1363 inch cube. Remember, you got to multiply this number by 1,000 because I didn't have a room to write all this. It's a cube inch, so you got to make it to a pound inch to get that number. Equal, the bottom one is going to be... Uh, One minus point nine time basically same thing up there thirty four forty plus seven thirty five plus twenty two oh five okay and divided by uh F -A -T came out to be uh, um that's not T I F -A -T. If a T per spec, if a T per spec is, which it's up there, 12 times screw root of a, uh, F, C, I, F prime C, which is equal 12 times screw root of 5,000, and that is uh, 849 PSI in tension. So now we have 849 here. And minus 0 0.9 time. Minus 22.05. So that was 11.42 inch cube. Okay. Now let's go back to that PCI load table. Let's go back to the... Uh, load table from PCI uh, website 
So now we're going to come in here and we said, okay, double T, we're going to select a, a double T. And if we look at all these right here, and we're going to see different sizes. We went with this first one right there. And let's see if it fits our stuff. Let me make this a little bigger. Okay. So now the uh, we have uh, these are uh, 10D, D24, and these the uh, cross-section property. When we look at the uh, uh, section module bottom is 1126 and the top is 3607. And looking at ours, so we're going to say, okay, the bottom controls and we're going to use 1142. And we look at 1142 and we look at over here, the lightest one we can find is basically this section that we select. And SFB actually is 1264. And that is what we're going to use. So we're going to say, okay, uh, try, let me write this down, try uh, T10 DT24. And you look and look at this table here, this uh, section, familiarize yourself with all the stuff, it's pretty self-explanatory. So we have all the information in here uh, we need. And we will use this uh, as we go along all these uh, property, the 80 cross-sectional area and uh, and if you look at the weight is 468, so I don't have to change my moment. I'm perfect. I'm good right there. Okay, let me erase this book. I'll come back to you. Okay, so now we're going to go ahead and complete our design criteria. Pr one of the first thing I want to do, I want to for the uh, uh, calculate the EC and uh, E and EE itself, where they are. That's something that you, as a designer, you have to pick because when you do your stress analysis, uh, it makes a big difference what number they are. Normally, what we're going to say the EC is basically is the, uh, I mean, Y bottom. Uh, y bar and from here, this neutral axis from here, based on a section that we picked, I think it came out to be 1777. 1777. So this is going to come out 17.77 minus the cover. The cover is about usually 3.75, 3.5. Let's say 3.5. It's minus 3.5, and that will give me uh, 14.5. Twenty-seven, fourteen point twenty-seven. So that distance right here is fourteen point two seven. This distance right here, that's something you can decide and you can make a change you back and forth. Let's call that. Uh, I want to stay with the example itself. I say that's a uh, uh, four point one nine one inches, and I want to know the difference between those two. So I know what is this, right? Um, the E comes out too. So the E comes out for there, uh, 1427 minus 491, and that is uh, 9.36 inches. Okay. While we're there, copy all this stuff here that you have. I like to know what's uh, E at point for L. We know what is at center, what is at point for L? And that's going to become basically uh, 491, which we know that, and plus point for L is uh, 28 point four times 70 and in the center is 35 feet. So that's basically 28 over 35. And time, 9.36. And E at point four L is equal to 12.40. Also at the transform point, E at 2.1, which is a transport uh, uh, transfer point is uh, same thing, 4.91 plus 
2.1 divided by 35 times 936, and that comes out to uh, 547 inches. Let me double check something here. you have to go ahead and come up with, let's say we're going to use uh, 14, um, 14 half-inch diameter uh, strength, which is, uh, has a uh, uh, 270 KSI. And therefore, our uh, APS is going to come out to 14 times 0.153, the area of half inch is 0.153, and that will give me a uh, 2.142 inch square. My PI it comes out to 0.75 APS. F a P U. So that's going to become 0 0.75 times 2.142 times 270,000 KSI and I mean 270,000 PSI. So 434 kips. <coughs> P O is equal to 347 kips. I see 20% uh, or sometimes you can see this might be 0.85, a 15%. The numbers depend, you know, probably closer between both of them, between 15 and 20% loss. So now we've got all our design criteria done. We can do some calculation. So go ahead and let me bring something up on uh, Excel. We're going to use the Excel sheet. There's a couple ways you're going to do this. We're going to use an uh, Excel sheet and come up with the different distresses at mid-span, distresses at 0.4L, distresses at transport, and compare them to the spec in the ACI and PCI uh, code book, see if it's going to make it. And I'm going to use the Excel sheet right there. So set up your Excel sheet like what we have here and we have the load. I want to know what's uh, in those three different locations. We want to find the stress. Uh, the FB, FT, both bottom and top. And then when we come back down here, what is the limiting stress is based on the ACI code, which I just put on board and you can see it. And that's where we, the limiting factor are. Is it going to make it or is it going to fail? And we're going to go ahead and populate this uh, Excel sheet here. All right. Let me bring this back down. Okay. Did you get that? Good. Let me bring it down. Okay. Let me go back to the spread Excel sheet, explain uh, what I have done. I put all the design criteria in here into the spreadsheet so we can uh, calculate a lot easier. Bring it back up. There we go. Right here. So look at this. Uh, the green section is at a transfer point. So I want underneath here, I put in all these uh, uh, PEA, uh, uh, section module bottom and top, dead lead moment, uh, superimposed dead load, and uh, superimposed life load, and E. And as, as you know, for let me make this smaller so we can see everything on the same screen. One more. As you can see, we calculated E at transfer point, came out to f 547. We uh, only concern about dead lead moment at the uh, at transit point. Okay, before I start uh, populating this spreadsheet, and I want to uh, go over a couple of things. These are the uh, uh, limiting factor and these the val corresponding value. Right here is the uh, uh, calculation of a uh, service load stress. We have the neutral axis here. We got a, a stress at the top and the bottom. We're going to use this closely uh, in this uh, table here. So let's go ahead and uh, populate this. 
and I get a P over A for at the transfer point, which P is, uh, I'm going to just go ahead and type equal, P is a P O, and divide that by uh, uh, the area, which is right here, and hit enter. Then we're going to go to the other one, P time E. Again, is equal, P right here, time E is here, and divided by, uh, it's the bottom right here, and enter. Same thing, uh, equal moment divided by S enter. We're not gonna bother with because this is just at the transfer. The only thing we really are concerned about is the dead load weight of the uh, beam itself. This is before we add these stresses. We're gonna come up look at this diagram right here, and you have P plus at the bottom. We're looking at the bottom right here. That's F B for bottom, and at the bottom we have P E divided by A which is right here, that's a plus, then plus P E divided time E divided by S, which is the second column, and that's positive. And then it says minus M divided by S E B. So this number right here is basically a negative, so I'm gonna put a minus in front of it to get our sign correct this way. Okay, now this is a negative. Again, these column right here at the bottom, the sign should <coughs> correspond to right here. And that's why we have a positive, positive, and negative, and we have positive, positive, negative. And PE over A is basically our P divided by A, and these correspond to these also. So now I'm going to total all this. It's equal sum of this one to this one right here, and hit enter. So now we find, find out this number is less than that, that means it's okay. And uh, we're gonna go ahead and populate the rest of them. Okay, so to save some time, I completed this spreadsheet. You can follow up, see if you gotta get the same number. Basically self-explanatory. The value here correspond to the, the number down below it right here. Because as we talked about, the, uh, the transfer load E was 547, at mid span E was 1427, and at the point 0.4 was for 12.4. Uh, Again, at mid span and at the transfer, we just only worried about the uh, dead load weight of the beam itself. But once the job site is, is completed, we go ahead and use the other two uh, uh, load, which is basically a superimposed dead load moment and the uh, life load moment to get the stresses out. So. Uh, and in this case, uh, we followed the sign conversion. Let me go over the F at top. F at top was a PE, PE divided by PE divided by A, that's positive. Then minus PE times E divided by S, that's why this number here, this cell is negative. And then it's gonna plus moment divided by S at top, so which is right there. And the total came out to this right here, less than a limiting, which comes out okay. Then we go to the mid span. At the mid span, we do the bottom stress using this right here, PE divided by A plus PE divided by SAB minus SAB. And that's where the number comes out like that. It's similar to this other column here. And then total number comes out less than a limiting stress, which is okay. We do the same thing for top. Now, when we get to the at service load at the uh, job site, it's all completed. We're gonna do a FAB bottom and then we do two, two, two different top per code. We get there in a minute. So when you do the bottom you have all the m other moment combined. Superimposed dead load and life load. And then this at the bottom you come up to the tension of 6699 and which is less than this value we okay. Now for the top if you remember let me bring it up see if I can find that um, Yeah, 
the ACI explains, which is put in the table, you can go ahead and look it up yourself. It says the concrete compressive stress, the limit at service load, and that's why we have to use these two different value, uh, pre-stress plus sustained load 0.4 F'C and pre-stress plus total load 0.6 F'C. So we use both those two limit in here to uh, uh, 0.45 and 0.6. And again, the same conversion for top is right here. You're going to have positive, and then you're going to have negative. Then the moment is going to be positive, and the total in both cases is going to come out less than the uh, uh, limiting stress, and the whole thing comes out okay. And therefore, this beam that we selected, it will pass. It's not way over design, and that's perfect. So I hope this was useful. If you like it, please give me a thumbs up. Encourage me to put other videos on. Thank you and have a wonderful time.